bells were rung, people paraded the streets of St. Paul to welcome us home, and everybody was glad beyond a possibility of expression. <laughs> we then marched to the upper landing and again boarded the steamboat and started for Fort Snelling. After four years of bloody combat, the American Civil War finally came to a close in April 1865 with the surrender of Robert E. Lee at Appomattox Courthouse. I, I just imagine what it must have been like. You know, you've got your husband or your son, your brother uh, in the war, and you get the news that Richmond has fallen. And very shortly after that, Lee surrenders. There must have just been such incredible joy that happened. But I always think of the widows and the children of those men who didn't come home and how the occasion wouldn't have been nearly as joyous. Lincoln had called on citizens to move forward in peace together. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan. Lincoln even spoke in favor of voting rights for some African Americans. But triumph quickly turned to tragedy with President Lincoln's assassination at Ford's Theater less than a week later. I think it would be safe to say he was at the top of his popularity when he was assassinated. And the grief that people felt at that point in time, such highs and lows that happened within just a few short weeks. The nation mourned and the Union Army marched one last time in a grand review through the Capitol. I think the Grand Review must have really raised spirits a lot. I think it was a very wise move to have done such a, a, a big event to celebrate the end of the war. I would have liked to have seen the entourage that followed behind the army, the medical workers, and particularly all of the freed slaves who were following behind. Minnesota soldiers, eager to return to their families and farms, began arriving home that summer. One unit, the 2nd Minnesota Infantry, had survived fierce fighting in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia. To commemorate the 150th anniversary of this storied regiment's return, reenactors from around the country converged on Fort Snelling to retrace their final steps before returning to civilian life. It's just so heartwarming to see them march into the fort and see the families, the children that were running towards them. It really felt like a homecoming. With country restored to peace and prosperity, Partly through your executions and sacrifices, you return once more to your homes. The Union forever, hurrah, boys, hurrah. It brought in people from all over the state, the nation, the world. There were young people who came dressed in uniforms, dressed in their ladies' gowns. It's not only a great way to get people interested in history, but it's also a great way to try and get a feel, even in a really ephemeral way, what perhaps they went through in, in just the smallest details of their lives. It's very important to know the history of our soldiers and how they fought so hard to where we're at and the freedom that we got today is very important for our children to know. The Civil War era was such an important part for our country to reestablish its belief in freedom and liberty and to become united as a nation again and we wanted to come and see what was going on with the Civil War here at Fort Snelling in our home state. Soldiers received their final wages, paid their respects, and went home to a state and nation forever changed. It's a story of strength and how people were able to survive, whether they were soldiers or whether they were spouses or children, and how that really informs our country today. It's something good to remember. 
William Bircher was the drummer boy for the Second Minnesota. He kept an extensive diary throughout the war and the regiment's last days at Fort Snelling. Goodbye, boys, goodbye. God bless you, old fellow, was shouted again and again, as by companies or in squads, we were off for our different homes. Some of us bound north, some east, some west, but thank God, all bound for home sweet home.